All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how we can place people throughout a scene uh, using MoGraph. And if you have a smaller project, maybe like a, an individual room or two, placing people manually isn't that big of a deal. But if you have a larger scene where you have multiple buildings and streets and sidewalks and things like that, uh, well, using a technique like this, using MoGraph actually, can really speed up the process. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's the scene we're going to be working with today, a little bit more complex than my typical scene. Uh, full disclosure, um, everything but the buildings did come from the asset browser. So the buildings uh, did come from a Kipash kit that I got because of my Octane subscription. Uh, so just want to point that out. Unfortunately, I didn't see any buildings really in the asset browser here. Um, but, you know, aside from that, the trees, the cars, stop sign, fire hydrant, all came from the asset browser. But here is what we're gonna be working with. And if we had a scene like this, or even a larger scene where we wanted to place people throughout and have them be in specific areas like the sidewalks and not be in specific areas like the street, well, then that's something that can be a little bit tricky. And especially with a scene this size or larger, trying to place them by hand, uh, and even make them look natural uh, can be a very time consuming process. And so we're gonna use MoGraph to help us with that. So the trick here is really uh, to come up with a, a separate object that you want to place the people on. And so in a project like this, what I did was I duplicated my road slash sidewalk. So this object here, and then what we're going to do is go through and kind of chop it up and get rid of the parts or pieces where we don't want people to be. And I've kind of already done that with this one. Okay, and to make this maybe a little bit easier to see, I'll switch the display color to something like custom, give this a color, and maybe even just nudge it up on the Y axis so we can see it just a little bit uh, more. But you can essentially see, hopefully, I don't know how high I have to raise that, there we go, that I've tried to eliminate the places where I wouldn't want people. So that's the street, that's where these trees are, um, perhaps even some of these steps, okay? And I actually forgot to delete the curves and so we wouldn't want any people kind of just floating on that. So uh, let's go through and delete all of those polygons. But that's essentially it for um, this process. And I think if I just go into, say, like a side view or a front view, just select everything kind of like that, making sure tolerance selection is turned on. Well, then I think that should delete all of our sidewalk stuff. Nope, I take it back, most of it though. And we can move on. So maybe one more. Oops, might have done just a little bit too high there. Perfect, that looks good. Awesome, cool. And we can adjust this as needed. So I'm not terribly concerned about making this perfect right this second. Okay, um, but yeah, this is what we're gonna work with. And yeah, there's a lot of overlap. And here are the people I'm gonna be using. Um, just the people from the asset browser here. I believe these come from render people. Uh, I've gotten uh, some models from there. They've worked out pretty good. And I will just place these, actually don't need to place them in a null, but just gonna drag them into my scene one by one. I find it a bit strange when you're adding something from the asset browser, it, you know, it's letting you place it anywhere you want the user interface. I don't even know what would happen if I tried to drag a person up there, but um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so these definitely are um, from render people. It says as much. And so I have all five of my people here. And this technique also allows you to minimize the number of polygons or objects you're gonna have because we are gonna use a cloner. So I can take all these people, place them in our cloner. I suspect the size is gonna be off. The whole scale of this scene is a bit off. Um, but now what we're gonna do is take, yeah, the people, yeah. <laughs> They're a bit small. So let's scale them up. See if we can't get them a little bit larger. Eh, maybe something like that. Looks pretty good. Yeah, that street is definitely too narrow, but um, that's fine. It will work for today. All right, so we have our cloner. We have our people. They're about the size we want them to be. What we're going to do is switch the mode here to object. 
and then drag in the piece of geometry we called people right there. Okay, now you can see they're all kind of lying flat on the ground. And I think I'm actually going to hide that people piece of geometry because the Z fighting was annoying me. But yeah, that's no good. Uh, so I'm going to come into my transform tab here and figure out what axis we need to adjust. And it looks like it's something like that. So it's going to be negative 90. And because the pivot point or axis for all these people was on the ground, they should sit pretty darn close to where we would want them to. So they're not floating or anything like that. And now we're starting to get somewhere. Okay. What I can do is go into the object tab and increase the count here to whatever it is I want. And obviously the more people you have, uh, the better this will look. Um, you know, with a total of five people, we're probably going to get something that looks a bit repetitive here. Okay. I could come in to um, my clones here and switch this to random to perhaps change up the order a bit. And yeah, we're starting to get somewhere now. Okay. Um, from here, we can do a few different things because as of right now, the rotation is pretty much the same for each, you know, person um, or model. And so adding a random effector will allow us to change the rotation a little bit. So we could do something like really 180 is about as what much you need since this is the random. Um, do know though that this isn't going to give us quite as natural looking people as if we were to do this ourselves, right? So, you know, this person's kind of walking out of the building. Um, uh, that you know, person looks pretty good, but sometimes the position of the people just doesn't work. Um, and there's a couple of things we can do to kind of help fix that. Uh, the first would be to come back here to our geometry and make some adjustments to it. So maybe I don't want them to be able to be right as close to the building. So I can select those points and move them. And you can see how they're getting further away. I could do the same thing here, although that building isn't where it needs to be. That's a bit unfortunate, but something like that. And even the edge here, we may not want them to be able to be right up to the edge of the street. And just repeat that process for your geometry here. So something like this, oops, a bit too much, right? And even here, I probably don't want them as close to the building as that. And select all those points, we move them a bit forward. There you go. And now we're starting to get somewhere. All right, so that's looking pretty good. A few things you can do uh, to help make this look better. You can adjust the seed if you want to kind of randomize what models are going where. All right. Um, you can also use a push apart effector to get these a certain distance away from each other. And it certainly helps to know the size of the people, um, or at least generally speaking, especially not so much on the Y, but on the X and Z. I think we'll, we'll be able to get something pretty close. Oops, I wanna be over here. We'll come over to my effectors, choose push apart, and make sure that's applied. I didn't see anything move. All right, so maybe we even put that before it, not that it should really matter. And yeah, we can come here and adjust the distance between these. So if we want them closer together, further apart. I actually think we want this to happen, well, it shouldn't matter whether this happens before or after the rotation, but you can see how doing too large a value here, you know, will make them ignore uh, where we position them in the first place. So uh, that's where, once again, knowing kind of the size of the people um, can help. So maybe something like that. Now we can see how they're just spread out a little bit more if they need to be. All right, so hopefully don't get people intersecting or going through other people. And, so you may also run into issues like this, where this person is clearly in a place we don't want them to be. Wow, is that supposed to be the door? So uh, yeah, the scale here is way off on these buildings. Um, I'll have to fix that because I want to use this scene for other things going forward. But what you can also do is combine this with MoGraph selections to remove people, to rotate people, um, or even you know change their... Well, I already talked about rotation. So to, to do different things just to a couple of different people. So with our cloner selected, I can come up to my MoGraph menu here and choose MoGraph selection. 
if I make this large enough, should be able to do display vertices there. And there we go, it's at the bottom. So I've selected that person and I would want to go through here and see if there is, if I can get out of this tree, um, anybody else. Now I'm in a building um, that I would want to select and get rid of. I'm gonna go right back into that building, aren't I? Right, so anybody else that's kind of too close to something in a place they shouldn't be. All right, so this lady looks like she is too close to the building. I could look on the other side if I can get out of that stupid tree. Actually, okay, that's not too bad. So I've saved out a selection of people here. And what I can do with that selection is, as long as I have it selected and my cloner, I can come back up to my MoGraph menu all the way over here and choose Hide Selected. And what that will do is hide those people. Right, so if there are just a few people I don't want to see that are in the way intersecting something, um, I can very easily take care of that. Uh, once you hide people though, you want to be very careful because you won't want to come back in here and adjust the seed value. So hide, hiding people, making these finer adjustments is something you're gonna want to save to the very end here. But now if we look back through our camera, you can see we have quite a few people placed. Oh, we got somebody else that needs to be there. Honestly, I think we should be able to add her. Yep, there we go. Um, and now she's gone. And we can see our, our people that have been placed. I find it interesting. We don't have as many people like right here in the camera view. And so that's where maybe checking back here sooner, adjusting that seed value um, would have been uh, useful. But uh, it's also, could just be, nope, all right. So just kind of a weird random thing happening. I bet if we do go high enough with our seed value, that could help. I suppose it's the push apart. No, I don't even know what's causing people not to show up there. Uh, you will also wanna make sure you check your normals. Not that I have a problem with this scene, but um, the people could be you know, kind of going underneath here. So that's essentially it for how we can place people quickly and efficiently. Obviously, like I mentioned, the more models you have, the better. This is looking a bit repetitive and it still doesn't replace maybe placing a couple of hero people, if you will, more important where if you need them to be doing something specific, crossing the street, um, if you wanna put somebody close to the camera, um, that type of thing. But in terms of getting a lot of people placed very quickly, um, this technique, this method is really, really hard to beat and can save a whole bunch of time versus trying to do it manually. The last thing I'll say here is depending on uh, how heavy your scene is, you may want to switch the instance mode to something like render instance or even multi instance. Um, and that can allow you to, you know, render quicker, uh, not run out of memory if you're using something like Redshift or Octane. And if you're switch this to multi-instance, well, we can then switch this to say bounding box, uh, which will allow us to um, keep our scene a little bit lighter and easier uh, to work with as we navigate and um, do other things in it. Okay. All right. Well, that will do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.